The new St. Croix Crossing Bridge has both an exciting and challenging design. It's a hybrid bridge called Extradost that utilizes two construction methods, a box girder bridge like the new Interstate 35W bridge and a cable stay bridge like the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Florida. This design has been used many times before in Europe and Japan, but it's fairly new to the United States. In fact, the St. Croix Crossing is only the fifth extradost bridge in the nation and the first of its scale. Once complete, the bridge will be nearly one mile long. The new St. Croix Crossing will feature four lanes, two eastbound and two westbound. A 12-foot wide pedestrian and bicycle path on the upstream side of the bridge also adds to the width of the bridge deck. Altogether, the driving surface will be 100 feet across. The bridge deck on the St. Croix Crossing it consists of many segments. On the main river span, there's about 650 segments. On the approach bridges, there's about 330 segments. And these are large segments uh, that are somewhat of a box shape, uh, hollow sections inside. They have a top uh, driving surface uh, that the cars and vehicles will be driving on, and then web walls to help support uh, the weight. Uh, one segment will weigh about 170 to 180 tons. In other terminology, that's about 28 elephants on one single segment. And we're doing that 650 times. The bridge deck comes together in two phases, once the piers have been built in their full height and the crossbeams are in place. The first step is completing the pier table at each pier location. So a, a pier table uh, consists of a first, it's a cast in place segment. It's in the same shape as the segments themselves. The pier table construction process goes like this. Forms are fitted on each side of the crossbeam in the shape of a segment. Steel rebar and high strength steel strands called tendons are placed by hand within the forms. Concrete is brought to the site and poured into the forms and over the rebar and tendons. Notice that the final structure has hollow space in its center, similar to the precast concrete segments. This is done on purpose so the precast concrete segments have something to exactly match up to like putting together puzzle pieces. So the segments are hollow for structural efficiency. So the structure is, is built and, and constructed in a way such that we're making best use of all of the materials. If we would build just one big block of concrete, we can imagine there'd be much, much more weight. It would take much more cables, much more reinforcement to hold it up. Completing the pier table means the contractor can start building the bridge deck out from the piers. There's a precise way to do this. The engineering term for it is cantilever construction. Crews alternate in placing segments on either side of the pier. Remember, the segments are heavy. Crews must keep the load or weight of the structure balanced at all times or the span will tip over. The segments come to the project site on barges, 33 river miles from the Grey Cloud Island casting facility to the project site. And there's two different means that we're using to get the segments up to the deck elevation. The first is called segment lifters. In the photos we see the big, large, blue structural steel members that are on the ends of the cantilevers. So those will reach down, fasten to a segment on the barge, and then lift it up. That's one method, is called the segment lifters. The other is a ringer crane. It's a large crane that has capacity of lifting up to 660 tons. The next step in the process, we put a segment epoxy on each face. It does a couple of things that it provides a structural shear transfer and it also provides a sealant. After the glue is applied on both faces, the segments are pushed together and then they're tightened by a series of large steel rods. Crews will install 29 segments in a row on both sides of each pier. Once the 29th segment goes up, a two and a half foot gap will remain between the spans. Crews close the gap by installing forms, filling the space with rebar, and finally pouring concrete on site. The last closure is between Pier 8 and 9 for structural reasons. Uh, there's a lot of movement that goes on in this bridge. Pier 8 is the shortest of our piers, it has the most movement, and so we want to minimize the amount of movement and things that are happening from the bridge itself. There will be nearly 2,000 miles of cable strands inside the bridge once construction is complete. That's the distance to New Orleans and back. All of these invisible cables are what's holding up the bridge deck. The cables are interconnected and ultimately thread back to the piers. 
the piers transfer the load or weight on the bridge onto the foundations. That's how the bridge will support vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle traffic once it opens to the public.